In this video, I want to show you how you can get more contributors, so that's more stars and more forks, to your open source project. Hi, my name is Eddie and I'm an open source enthusiast and I have had all my success down to open source. I really want you to have the same. So I want to show you how to make your project stand out. And remember, it's not just about your project. It is also about the projects that you contribute to, how you collaborate and communicate with people. But today we're going to focus on your project. So I've taken one of my projects, for example, which I think we started like under two months ago and you can see the stars and forks at the top right are already climbing really fast and it's great to have so many contributors. So thank you all so much for contributing. So how did we achieve this? Was the project like some new amazing idea that no one ever thought of? No, it's just called Linktree and it's an open source alternative to Linktree. I believe the reason why it has accelerated so fast is because we made the project quite easy to use and get started to understand and very inclusive. And how have we done this? Well, anything we're not using on our repo, we hid. So for example, as you can see down the right hand side, I've got release and packages. They're being used now, but when they weren't being used, we removed them. And we can remove them by hitting on the cog button here and you can tick and untick. So when we were using environments, we had it ticked to be displayed. And now it's not being used, we unticked it. But packages and releases we are displaying because we are using them. And do use these features. I think it is really important to create releases. A release is like a commit, but a collection of commits, and it can't be changed. And we also use a GitHub action to create the release. I don't do this every time. I get the GitHub action to do it every time. It automatically increments the semver number depending on what changed in that pull request that got merged. Okay, I'm racing ahead here, bear with me. Maybe let's start right at the beginning. But I just wanted to show you the first impressions that people get. If there's lots of sections that are not being used, they might think it's not a very active project. And don't forget about your readme. Have a screenshot so the first thing that people see is a screenshot, that's what they want. Have a link so they can go click on it and go see what it looks like. Okay, this is what it looks like, right. And if I click on one, this is what it looks like. Do you have that? I think they're the most important things to get started and they're quite easy to do. Right, let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the top left and work our way across. It's important to keep branches to a minimal. Do you have branches, do you use branches, but they should be short lived usually. So you probably want these to be in single digits and never to go in double digits. Whereas with tags and releases, that's the complete opposite. You do want this to keep climbing, keep going. So as the project grows, this number grows as well. Issues. People think, well, I'm the only one working in my project at the moment. I won't use any issues. But how are people going to discover your project if you don't have any issues? See this search at the top? That searches issues as well. See this big button at the top that says issues? That's on every page of GitHub. Issues. Yes, it first starts off when you click it to show me the ones that I've created or the ones that are assigned to me. But then most people come across here and they search for label good first issue. And when they do that, you want your project to come up, unless they can filter this by technology as well to hone in on your project. But you won't appear here if you don't use issues. So go back to our issues. We have got lots of issues and you can see lots have been closed already. And then use the labels. We actually have a GitHub action that creates all these labels for us using an open source standard. I highly recommend you do the same and it is just a copy and paste of the GitHub action YAML config. And you can contribute that to other projects as well. So it's just win-win all round. So now you've got the issues and you've got the labels. I do love the milestones and project boards, but you don't need those to get more contributors and have your project stand out. So we're not gonna talk about those in this video. Issues and labels, definitely number one. Number two, use pull requests. Even if it is a friend of yours giving you a quick review on the pull request, then you can merge it. That looks really good. And also you might learn from your friend and your friend might learn from that. And it could be someone in the, in the community. That's how you get the project notice. Imagine sharing the link of the project and just saying, hey everyone, star my awesome source awesome source star my awesome project it sounds a bit spammy and people aren't gonna star it they might not even go have a look at it so the best way for this to work is to actually say hey i've made a pull request it involves these types of changes be clear is it html css javascript ruby python whatever so people know before they click on it to know 
if it's something they're going to be interested in. And the few people that will be interested in, yes, you'll have a lower number that are interested, but those people will be interested, right? There's no point you as an open source developer going to a conference about sales and marketing and saying, hey, I want to tell you about my open source project. They're not going to be interested, even if there's 100,000 people there. But if you can get in front of 10, 20 people that use open source, that want to contribute to open source, and they use the same technology that you're using in that project, or that pull request, then you're more likely to get five, 10 people, a higher percentage, go look at your pull request and then they'll see, oh, this is a nice project. Let's see if I can get involved with it. I'll give it a star to keep an eye on it. Do you see where I'm going with this? Don't go for spray and pray. Don't go for quantity. Go for quality people who are interested. So be specific when you share your pull request and say, hey, I'm looking for someone to review this who has knowledge of JavaScript. They don't have to be an expert. A fresh pair of eyes or someone who's interested in JavaScript can add so much value to both of you. I can't recommend it enough. Remember, you don't want to be spammy. You want to show that you want to get some feedback and you can give some value in return as well. It's a two-way street. You're working together with people on open source. It is about collaboration and communication. Right, if you're not using discussions, turn it off. I highly recommend using discussions, but if you're not using it, maybe disable it. Same with the wiki. If you're not using the wiki, I highly recommend disabling it. Actually, I highly recommend not using the wiki and putting documentation within your readme and the docs folder in your code base. Therefore, it can go through the same version control that your code does, your tests do. It can get reviewed. Your documentation can get reviewed. And it's also about knowledge transfer as well. I think it's really important. So I highly recommend having a docs folder in your project. I always start off by using the readme first. And as that the documentation grows, then I move it to the docs folder. And you can do, always deploy the docs folder to GitHub pages with tools like ASCII Doctor and so many other tools as well. Next thing to think about, have a description and have a link. This is so important. Don't make the description like 10 pages. Okay, you obviously can't, but don't make it so long. Keep it like one or two sentences, concise, important information about what the project is about. Have some topics, maybe not too many. Use releases and packages if you can. And packages are for, for example, your container. So if you're using Docker, again, if you're not using it, disable it. You don't need contributors in the readme because GitHub shows contributors here. I know there are other libraries and tools that you can use to show other contributions like documentation and issues and so forth. But if people contribute to documentation in the readme or in the docs folder, then that's still going to go through the normal pull request process and they will appear here. And remember, your readme is really important. Get feedback on your readme. Do people understand what your project is about within the first five or 10 seconds? Is the first impression of the project really good? Get feedback on that. And then that way you can make the project better and better for the next person, which is why I love it when I get a fresh pair of eyes on my project, because we make it better for the next person and then for the next person afterwards. So if you want to get into open source and you're unsure where to start, then look at these welcoming projects. And the way you can find if a project's welcoming is you can go to the insights tab on any project Project, you don't have to be a maintainer. Then go to the community tab and have a look at these ticks. If any of these ticks are missing, maybe you can contribute these back, raise an issue and find out. But also make sure they have a code of conduct. Make sure they have a license that is open source and it's not restrictive. And you can contribute some of these back if they're not ticked already, as I mentioned. And if you want to check if a project is inclusive, another tip you can do is go to the pull request tab and then go to the closed pull request and look at the red ones, not the purple ones that have been merged. See, it's been merged. You want to go to the red ones that haven't been merged and see if they've been closed by the author or closed by the maintainer. And if they've been closed by the author, that's fine. Hopefully, they've given a comment why they've closed it. Again, it will make their profile look more like they're giving context and understanding. But also, if it's been closed by the maintainer, do check and find out why and have they given a comment. So you can see this one was opened by one of our community members, Pancasito, and people have left some comments, approved and so forth, and Pancasito has closed. So if the authors close it, that's fine. Ideally, they would uh, give a comment. Okay, we've seen this here. So we have actually discussed in line. So I've said, I don't think we should update other people's profile. And uh, Pancasito, although they meant had the best intentions and so forth, they agreed that we probably shouldn't update it and they should update their own. So they've gone and closed the pull request. So you can see straight away, this is an inclusive project. There's been some collaboration on this already. So there's nothing wrong with pull requests being closed, but how they've been closed in a friendly way rather than just closed by the maintainer and people don't know why. And they don't know if you should contribute about something else. Was, did they do something wrong? 
you have to have no idea. So it's really important that the project maintainers give context, but they don't always. So do pick a project that is really friendly. Make your project easy for people to contribute to. Like I said, have a readme, have a quick start, get feedback on that, have issue templates. And if you wanna get contributions that are higher value and you're not discussing, are oh, your indentations incorrect, indentations not, and so forth, I suggest adding a linter to your project and adding it as a GitHub action. And you can do this quite easily in the workflows folder under the GitHub directory. And you can do things like build. So for example, this is gonna build our project, it's gonna run the linter, and it's gonna make sure the code builds. And the reason for this is then if the pull request fails from GitHub actions, then the author of the pull request knows to go and make some changes in because they'll get a notification that saves you going to say, hey, your indentation isn't correct here. Oh, the project didn't work here. I think you're missing a bracket. This way they get feedback. And you can use tools like Husky. So before they do a commit, it would run these checks locally. So even before they have to wait for a GitHub action to run, then they are getting feedback locally. That's really, really important. And in this case, we run our automate tests as well on a GitHub action as well. So I highly recommend using the GitHub actions. It's not hard to set up and it just adds so much value. And it's always great to see the actions go green and the different steps within the GitHub Actions. I will be doing an in-depth dive into GitHub Actions later on and how you can make your own custom actions. But for now, you don't really need this. I really believe 80% of the benefit from GitHub Actions comes from a few lines of YAML config. And if you see any other projects, for example, like this one, where you think, oh, I like those actions, you can just go to the workflow directory and have a look how they do it. So for example, with the release, you probably literally can copy and paste this entire thing to get your releases created for you automatically. Yes, you're commits will need the conventional commit messages for the GitHub action to trigger correctly, but that's easily done and you'll see some examples of that. Yes, you won't have this token. You can use the default GitHub token. I needed this because I'm chaining my GitHub actions. So little things like that might need tweaking, but 99% of it is going to stay the same. This video is probably getting long enough. Let me know your questions, your thoughts and your feedbacks in the comments below. I really love hearing them. Let me know if I've missed anything. Have you had any ideas that I didn't have? I'm always learning too. I'm here to start the conversation with you and see how we can both improve at the same time. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe below. And I look forward to chatting with you in our Discord community between live streams and videos. I'll see you in Discord, link in the description below.